Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crime. This is a picture of my dad and his two sons, Eddie and Elijah. I'm named after him and my brother is named after his brother. I show you all this picture to say this is my brother who I would have got my ass kicked for if I had got him in any trouble. And I also show you this picture to say how hardcore of a Detroit Lions fan I really am. I've been waiting on the Lions to win the Super Bowl for over 50 years. My grandfather, let me say that to y'all right here. My grandfather lived, and let you, can you get a shot of it, a, a clear one? My grandfather is this man right here. This man right here is my grandfather. Can you get a good shot of him? My grandfather lived to be 101 years old, and the Lions still ain't won the Super Bowl. And after today, I'm still a Lions fan. But let me tell you, this is Eddie Jackson Jr., Real True Street Crimes. And I want to tell you this story. I was sitting up on my fence at our house in Southfield, playing with my little, little transistor radio my dad had bought me. And my dad was upstairs with my mother, and Joe Weaver was down in the basement drinking at the bar bullshit and shooting some pool and drinking at the bar and looking at TV. So I'm sitting up on the wall at our house in Southfield, and I see I'm a little boy playing with the little transistor radio. I'm up on the wall just like this, you understand? I'm sitting on the wall playing with the transistor radio, and I see the same cars who raided our house. It was the same Ragley station wagon that was leading them. It was nine cars. And they pulled up in front of my house and lined up in front of my house, all nine cars, the exact same nine cars that had raided my house. So I jumped off the wall. I'm running through the garage. I run through the laundry room. I dash through the kitchen, run through the hallway, and run to the stairs and run upstairs, run to my father's bedroom, run through the door. Daddy, mama, 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 daddy. The monster man is outside. The monster man is outside, daddy. I'm telling you, the monster man is outside. I'm going crazy. My dad get up with his wife beaters on. He used to wear these colored. He had like this green pair of wife beater and shorts that match. He jump up and he walked downstairs. He said, Joe Weaver, go see what Eddie back. Joe, Joe, go see what Eddie baby talking about. He talking about the monster man out here. Joe Weaver go, open the front door. He come up from the basement, walk up, open the front door, walk out. He look out and show a motherfucking love. He see Ryan Gia Valley and his whole crew. They look just like hippies. That's exactly how they look. All of them was wild. They didn't look anything like federal police officers. They look like wild hippies, okay? And they lining up, nine cars. My father, Joe, who is, he said, he said fat man, he telling you that, that's them. My father run to the phone. Now let me tell y'all this. This is how scared my father was. He runs to the phone and said, Milton Henry, they finna come in my goddamn house. Get out of here right now, immediately. Get here, Milton. Okay, now, this is why my father is panicking like fucking crazy. He got the safe in the garage full to capacity level with money. Okay? I'm talking about anybody... Norma Jean Bell will tell you how big this safe is if she still lives in the house. It's in the garage with his, in his mink closet. He had the entire safe full of money, packed, where he couldn't get any more money in. Him and Joe had been doing that all day, packing the safe and putting up the money, okay? Normally, he don't keep no money there now. Here's, what, here's how fucked up he was. The million dollars and more of diamonds that he had got from the J.C. Penney's robbery, the heist, 
they was in the safe upstairs in a little box. He had them in a little box, all of them scattered out, loose diamonds in the safe, and the rest was packed with money. This is upstairs right next to his room. He is fucking panicking. Milton, get the fuck out here. Check out what happened. He just know he finna get his ass torn out. If they had a came in our house then, they would have told him a brand new asshole. Here's what happened. They sat in front of our house for about 10 minutes. My father, Joe Weaver, freaking out. I'm, dog. Oh God, he didn't come again. Not Monster Man. Not again, Monster Man. Please, not Monster Man. Anybody, don't let fucking Monster Man come in here. And it was about 10 to 15 minutes, and what they did, this is what happened. I swear to God, this is a real true crime, and it was in the newspaper. They pulled off another big fella named Leroy Kyers lived right around the corner. When they pulled off my house, you go right around the curve. The McCalls lived right here. And Leroy Kyers lived directly next door to the McCalls. Ron Gear Valley and them, boom, went and hit Leroy Kyers' house. God damn it, they went and towed. And Leroy was a big fella now. He was a big dog. He was out in Southfield in the 70s at the same time now. They went and hit Leroy Kyer's house. I will never forget the day they hit Leroy Kyer's house. Because if they had to hit the fat man that day, they would have told him a new fucking asshole. Thank God. I'm sorry they hit you, Leroy. But I was sitting on the fence and watched all this shit unfold. My father, Joe, jump in the jump. Joe, jump in the cat. Go see what's going on, Joe. Joe jumped in the caddy, swang out the circle of garage, out the circle of driveway, swang on around, swang on around the curb. He see Ron Gill Valley and all of them in Leroy shit. They in there tearing Leroy shit up. Leroy Kyers. Now, let me just show you how motherfuckers is. After the feds went in there and tore Leroy Kyers shit up and fucked this shit up, white folks used to live next door to Leroy Kyers. The very next day, them hunkies was putting their house up for sale, and that's when Spencer Holloway then moved there. After they hit Leroy Kyers them, Spencer Holloway moved next door to where Leroy was, and Spencer would later become one of my best friends. This is Eddie Jackson's real true street crime. This is my ice of cold shake tea. Put it in a bottle of cold water. Shake it up. With exercise, you'll lose weight. You understand? If you like to give me a play, go to my link. Hit shop categories. Health and wellness is where you'll find this Alleviate Cream at. Under health and wellness, give me a play. It's a CBD product. This is my Harmony Drops. It is also under health and wellness. It's a CBD product. Drop two under your tongue. Let it sit 60 seconds and swap them. And our thing here, and it's always our thing, is a five for five. Lose five pounds in five days. It is a total life change. And life is good. This is one to grow on Eddie Jackson, and he never kept any more money at the house after that. Him and Joe Weaver got their goddamn money and jewelry and shit out them diamonds and money out the house so fast after the police was in Leroy Kyer's house. They in Leroy Kyer's house tearing Leroy Kyer's ass and the fat man in the garage loading the goddamn truck up with money out the goddamn safe. Load, I mean, this motherfucker was going crazy loading up money trying to get that goddamn money out the house and get it away from there. He ain't even want the feds to think about coming in that motherfucker not that day. That would have been the worst day of all days. So subscribe, share, and like. This is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crime. Subscribe and share. Thank you to all. Thank you very much. Thank you.